Today in Siege, I learned that sometimes doing nothing is the best way to win. Hey, what's up guys, Irish Turtle here, and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys something that I recently learned in a ranked game right here on Border. Now, to be honest, this may sound like a really counterproductive video title and video, talking about the idea of being able to win a round without doing anything. But I promise you, once I start to get into this video, it'll make a lot more sense. You'll start to understand where I'm coming from, and uh, hopefully you'll actually learn some useful benefits to doing nothing in a round in Siege, but still being completely useful to your team. Now, I am showing you a little bit of B-roll footage here from the game in a previous round before we actually get to the round. I'm going to show what I'm talking about. But the reason I'm doing this is because it gives me a little bit of time to talk about the previous defending round, which unfortunately the footage for corrupted. Um, so in the previous round, basically, we were playing in the customs area on the uh, downstairs map of this, uh, downstairs of this map, rather, in sort of the southwest corner downstairs. And essentially, we were playing to hold this area and it became a case of we were losing quite badly. We were at one to three. We were pretty sure we were going to lose. So we'd only won the first round, and then everything else had kind of fallen to, fallen apart. And I basically decided to play Legion, play him upstairs in the hallway, coming from the east stairs, and basically covered a lot of the area. Now, I'll be honest, when I played this round as the Legion, I was really confident that we were going to lose. So I played really, really stupidly and did a lot of things that I don't normally do. Now, what's funny is when I was playing that role and playing stupidly, I actually managed to really aggressively hold this upper area and the uh, the main lobby area that's just to the south of where you can see here, actually just uh, just the back of that area, just behind obviously this bomb site here where we're holding. And um, what's funny was I played it so well that the enemy team wanted to get rid of me in that location. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to deal with it. And they basically just kept coming up against me and getting kills on them and it basically effectively helped us win the round I managed to get i think it was three kills that round and I, basically i played really really effectively and aggressively and it stopped them from winning now the reason i'm telling you about this is because this actually leads on into the next round that i played as lesion when we played that same bomb site at a later point basically the benefits of playing so aggressively in the previous round on defense made it so that when i came we came to play this round later on I could actually play super aggressively. Now, I'm going to flick ahead a little bit here just to this game round, just so I can kind of break it down for you and explain to you uh, why it was played so well. So, obviously, here we are. We're bringing it up to overtime match point. And we kind of said, right, you know what? We're going to play this uh, same customs inspection supply room again because we played it so well. And we kind of went, right, we'll play the same operators we did last time because it was such an effective hold. And basically, I picked Legion again with the same kind of idea that I'm going to start playing really aggressively. Um, but it actually turned out I didn't play that way. I played very differently to what my original plan was. Um, so obviously, as you can see here, we're loading in and we're just chilling out in the customs area here. And basically the plan was, uh, I was a little bit just, uh, doing some of the stuff here just at the start of the round. Basically my plan was, okay, I'm going to play stupid. I'm going to play dumb. I'm not really going to take this seriously. We're just going to play a really aggressive kind of upstairs main area hold like I did last time in the hopes that the enemy team don't know how to deal with it. Now, what's funny is it turns out that me being upstairs was actually the best choice I could have possibly made. Um, as you can see here, I put out a Legion mine just there on the main entrance, just so I can give my team a bit of an early warning if the east side gets breached. Uh, I do apologize about the, the uh, frame rate here. I don't know what's going on with why it's stuttering, uh, but we'll we'll move on from that, uh, see if I can fix that. But yeah, basically, I played up here in this main hall in the second floor, and I played it super aggressively in the attempts to try and stop the enemy team from pushing this angle. And as I said, my initial plan here was not to play this really passively. It was to play it super aggressively. But it just turned out that doing nothing became the most effective strategy. So here I put the barricade on the wall. The idea is here to stop anyone pushing from behind in the offices to get a kill. I put another goo mine out there just obviously to be aware of if enemies pushing. And I have the plan to put one down at the bottom of the stairs, obviously. Um, where I want it, what, well, at the top of the stairs, rather, just here. And um, I can see the shots coming through. So I know they already know I'm up here again. They know that this is where I held last time. And they're pushing me quite aggressively to get me out of this spot. Now, you've got to think right here at this point in time, we've got about 2 minutes 20 left. And they're already trying to take me out of this location. They're pushing the upstairs areas quite aggressively. And they know I'm here. And again, I made it clear that this is where I was holding. And it turned out that not only had they actually decided they were going to try and take me out of this round really quickly. But also, they were going to, you know... Um, Pick an IQ to actually stop me getting kills. Now here you can see the enemy is poisoned with goo. That is actually on the east downstairs in the main room. So again, I call that immediately to my team. And again, I'm kind of up here. I'm not really doing anything other than maintaining a presence in this main hallway. I'm not getting kills. I'm not playing aggressively. Here you can see the player who I kind of know is pushing this way. So I kind of put a few shots, make him a little bit afraid. 
and uh, push away. And then I realize I kind of can't really hold there anymore. So I push towards the offices here, towards the, um, obviously just off the hallway. Now the reason I do this is because in this location, I'm still kind of a threat to the enemy. They kind of still know that I'm up here. They kind of have an idea that I'm here. And again, you can see I've already wasted a minute and they are still trying to deal with me in this location. It sounds odd and it might sound really strange, but um, you're about to see I flick to the left and you notice the two goo mines are still there. In a moment, they'll start to disappear. The one in the hallway actually upstairs is already gone. So I know they are still trying to push me in this location. They are still trying to deal with me being in this spot because they don't know what to do. Even though I'm not really like attacking them, in this passive position, I'm still a threat to the enemy team. Basically, by, by doing nothing, they don't know where I am properly. They haven't got a positive fix on what I'm doing or where I'm holding. They just know I'm here. They know that there's a lesion up here. It's in the back of their minds. They know if they try and put that push that lower east side, there's going to be a problem. So I put out the goo mine there. Again, it was just the idea that if someone might push, they might get me there. And again, the drone it goes out immediately. So again, they know I'm still here. They know I'm still a problem. I get another goo mine poison. And uh, realistically, I overpeaked this quite a little bit. I shouldn't have really done that. But again, the point is they know I'm here. I'm keeping them kind of distracted. I'm not really doing a whole lot on the end of killing. And as you can see, we're down to the last 23 seconds. And there's still five enemies left and five teammates left. And they're still trying to deal with me in this office. Yes, I'm playing a little bit more aggressive now. But generally speaking, I'm not doing a whole lot on the objective defense-wise or like, you know, anything relevant-wise to really be doing a good hold. And here I just hold the window because I have an idea that someone might push. But we get the first kill from Grief Drums. Uh, Rob kind of like gets it back again. And we just sort of collapse on the enemy team. As you can see there, if that fuse hadn't been so lucky, it hadn't ended, I'd have gotten the kill there. But as you can see, we pushed really aggressively, managed to collapse on them. But they wasted so much time trying to deal with me in that upper area spot. Um, now, again, this is the sort of the start of the round where I'm hiding here. And I'll just quickly pause it. So you can see here, this is where I played where they knew I was the first time we played the round when we were on the defensive side. And there's an enemy... Down here to your left, uh, that's when I killed. And there's another enemy just here, is Zofia. Now, I killed these two enemies. And again, it meant they knew I was up here. It meant they knew that I was kind of, you know, a threat to them up in this area. And that had to make them conscious that I was here. And because I played this so aggressively this round, the pre the next round that I it comes across, ignore that. Uh, the next round I come across, I'm basically a threat to the enemy team. They know I'm up there. They know I played it effectively. They know I played it really aggressively. And they're worried. They don't want to have to just leave me up there in that location where I can be a trouble for them. And so they want to push me. But because I'm playing so passively, because I'm not being aggressive, I actually managed to utilize just the threat of me being there. It has nothing to do with me getting kills. Although, yes, I do play a little bit aggressively here and there. It's all to do with just me being there, doing nothing. Because doing nothing means they don't know where I am. They don't know what I'm doing. And because they weren't droning properly, they didn't know where to how to deal with me properly because they didn't know what, what the actual effective idea I had was. And that's the benefit you have to sort of take away from this is that doing nothing is sometimes basically the best you can do and the most you can do because in some ways you're just you're doing more than you would if you're attacking if that makes sense and again it sounds really odd it sounds really counterproductive you, you probably sat there thinking that's bollocks you know you have to do something to be useful but on the defensive side just the threat of knowing somebody is there is enough to keep you worried I mean, in a previous game that I don't have the footage for, unfortunately, we were playing on Oregon and there was a Cavera on defense who attacked, attacked us a couple of times. But I think it was one kill and then basically just disappeared and started roaming on the upstairs of Oregon and around the towers and stuff. And we didn't know what she was doing. We didn't know where she was. We didn't know how to deal with her. And we ended up wasting an entire minute just trying to deal with this one Cavera who we eventually got the kill on. And because she was playing so passively, it basically led to us wasting a lot of time. And if she hadn't suddenly become a really aggressive and pushed us from the meeting hall, we never would have actually, you know, been ready to push the basement on that map because we were just so concerned about having to deal with her in this roaming state, in this passive state. And the fact that she pushed actually became a negative because it meant that we knew she was dealt with and we knew she wasn't a concern. And that's the exact same case here. I'm playing the Legion. I'm a massive concern for these players. They don't know how to deal with it. They know they can't hold this open area in front of me just here without me being dead. This area here is pretty much a no-go because if I push out, I can run down there. I can shoot the pulse race down there. I can push down the stairs and get an angle. And there's not a lot they can really do to deal with me in that position. And so they don't know what to do. There's no real cohesive argument that says, hey, this is how we defend it and this is how we deal with it. So again, I just I just play up here in this hallway and it's just the threat. It's nothing to do with any kind of kills or any kind of like anything else. It's just the threat of me being here. 
realistically, I don't even have to shoot to get actually do anything for them because the goo mines do that for me. The goo mines put out this extra threat meter. Obviously, if I wasn't, you know, uh, Legion, I'd probably have to do a little bit more shooting, a little more aggressively to try and deal with it. But you get the point. I'm not actually actively really doing a hell of a lot. I'm just putting out these goo mines to let them know, hey, I'm still here. Hey, you still have to deal with me, even though I'm not really actively doing a hell of a lot to deal with you. And even during this round, you see it later on, um, when I overpeak downstairs here, down down the uh, down the bottom of the tellers. Realistically, I shouldn't have done this. This was a really big mistake. I should have just thrown out another goo mine. But the point was I got a little bit over aggressive and started to peak. And again, it's a problem we all have. We all do it. Sometimes we all overpeak things we shouldn't do so on defense, you know. Sometimes it's just the idea that that's, that's an issue you have to deal with. Um, but I kind of realize I'm a little bit rambling on again. But as I said, that was something that I recently learned in Siege is the idea to play passive. Because I'll be honest, I play super aggressive. It's one of my huge, huge problems that I have. I don't play passively enough. And in some cases, I just do too much. And this was just a perfect example of just doing just so little that the enemy having to deal with it and making a huge impact on them. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you guys think to playing passively? Do you think it's pointless and useless? Or do you think it's a really good strategy and actually it's something that you need to utilize more? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, obviously, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit that like button. Let me know in your comments in the description below if, if you're enjoying this series. There are lots of other videos to check out if you are interested at all. Um, you can find those in the playlist to the side. Again, if you have any things that you think would be interesting to learn, let me know in the comments below or on my Discord, which there's a link to in the description. I'm really interested to learn new things in Siege. There's a hell of a lot to sort of understand in this game. There's always new strategies that you can find and adapt as you start to play. Uh, beyond that, though, guys, as always, you can find me live on my Twitch, which is exactly where this game was actually taken from. Live from my Twitch channel. I did stream this live. Um, so, you know, if you want to head over to my Twitch, again, the link is in the description below. I also have a Twitter page where I tweet random shit. And again, link is in the description as always. And of course, other than that, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.